Joining us right now is Matthias Luhers, head of the overseas region at Mercedes-Benz. Uh, Matthias, thank you very much for joining us. Let me begin by asking you about the product launch plan for the India market, the kind of momentum that you see in India right now. Um, we have uh, a good momentum in India. I mean, we grow uh, by 41% last year, and we still have a double-digit growth again after the first two months this year. So we have uh, uh, new products coming. We are going to launch four new products in the second half of this year. And on the back of that, we uh, um, uh, plan and uh, we think we will further grow double digit uh, in 2023. Mm. All right. So you're saying you are continuing to expect double digit growth from the India market. Uh, let me also ask you about the kind of growth. If we speak about the global picture for Mercedes-Benz, how much of the growth are you expecting from the India market or what percentage of your sales could come from India? Uh, well, we, we don't go by the uh, exact uh, number uh, of percentage of India for the entire world, but I can tell you in growth aspects, we are most probably growing more and faster in India than in the world. Yeah? Again, last year, uh, our number on a worldwide scale was roughly uh, uh, 2 million 44,000 cars, which was uh, minus 0.5% uh, compared to the previous year. And in India, we grew 41%. Again, this year, we will grow double digit, which will be probably a little bit higher than the worldwide growth. So contributing uh, uh, positively to the worldwide momentum. Uh, I would also like to ask you about the global demand picture. Do you think uh, the demand will sustain itself going forward? Global demand is also quite strong as we speak. Obviously, uh, the um, scarcity of the last couple of years due to the COVID and therefore also the worldwide uh, um, 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 shrinking of the uh, semiconductor market has led uh, to a totally different picture over the last three years. And that is now coming to a different momentum because semiconductors are available again. We see more uh, availability. And at the same time, uh, in certain areas of the world, we see a cooling off, but on a high level. Nevertheless, we as Mercedes-Benz are still seeing a high customer order bank, and we are still seeing a double-digit growth also for Mercedes-Benz worldwide. Right. Uh, we're looking at a, at a lot of stress in the banking sector in the United States, also in Europe, with the developments we see in the, with Credit Suisse. Have you uh, started seeing a slowdown in some of your key geographies, including Europe and United States? Uh, again, I mean, um, the banking crisis is just a, a week old, yeah, or probably 10 days. So you would not see in the automotive industry a direct impact from one day to the next one. Therefore, I cannot tell you that we have seen a, a slower demand in Europe or in the U.S. Yeah? In general terms, we can see uh, that um, due to more availability, obviously the order banks are diminishing a bit to a more healthy relation because we had waiting periods from uh, 6 to 12 months. That is obviously not uh, a sound uh, waiting time for a customer. This is coming down a little bit to the benefit of the customers, but I would not see a cooling off in a worldwide situation. Right. So you're saying you've not seen a cooling off in demand just yet, but the order periods, the waiting periods have definitely started coming down. Uh, like you said, maybe too early to link any of, the, any of the market situations with what's happening in the banking sector in Europe or US. But uh, have you started seeing uh, a tendency towards caution or maybe deferring, postponing purchases in any geography uh, because of the possibility of a of a global recession. It's been written about a lot. Uh, not really. I mean, uh, we obviously see the geopolitical crisis and obviously we see uh, uh, our Russia business uh, diminishing. Basically, we stopped uh, because of the sanctions uh, to deliver into the Russia uh, um, uh, environment, into the Russian market. 
but in, in other markets, be it China, be it the US, be it Europe, uh, we don't see any recession tendency or diminishing of customer demand as we speak in this particular moment. Right. Uh, but as, the, as one of the leading luxury car makers in the world, uh, are you preparing for a, for a scenario where the stress in the banking sector may start impacting luxury purchases, discretionary purchases, uh, Matthias? Well, again, uh, it is too early to say whether this will have an impact. I mean, on the other hand, as you can see, uh, yeah, at least in Europe, uh, one Swiss bank uh, took basically over the other bank, and therefore you see on the stock exchange, at least in the major indicators, that the stock market is stabilizing uh, pretty quickly again, and uh, therefore we are not preparing for any recession at this particular moment because we don't see the recession tendency at this moment. Yeah, If that would ever happen, obviously then we would uh, act or react, but there's no plans as we speak. Right. Now, coming to Germany, according to some experts, could see a mild recession and a contraction over two quarters. Are you taking measures to cut costs, uh, maybe also reduce workforce in geography or in, uh, in uh, workforce in Germany and other key geographies, Matthias? No. Again, uh, because we don't see a recession happening uh, in the major markets of this world, uh, on the contrary, we still see a pent-up demand and a high order bank. Uh, we don't see uh, any uh, recession A coming and B therefore also not uh, a workforce which should be shrinking because we need to produce cars and we want to produce more cars in 2023 than in 2022 because the demand is there and we want to sell therefore obviously also more cars. Right. So there is no uh, preparation or any uh, uh, hectic uh, measures of reducing workforce because there is no need, as we see at this particular moment.